All right, so I mentioned that the next step is to run the installer file. How do we go about doing that? Let's take a look again at Cyberduck and we'll see here we've got installer.php. It's located right here. In order to run this, all I need to do is just load this particular file in my web browser and that will start the entire installation process. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and call that file, which is just installer.php okay that's exactly how it's written right here installer.php I know that'll work because it's inside this location right here okay so I'll go ahead and hit return and this starts the WordPress duplicator process okay we see here that we have the very first option here okay is we can either create a new database or connect and remove all data now we're we actually already created a database so what we need to do at this point is we need to connect this particular installation to our new database and so remember that information that we wrote down before now's the time to go get that so i'm going to go ahead and find that i don't need uh, actually i'll actually leave cyberduck open for right now let's just move that out of the way let's open up this temporary file that we had created and this is the temporary file that contained all of our database information that we created uh, a little while ago and let's go back to this page and let's see what we need to put in here um I'm going to skip this bit for now. I'm going to come back to this in a few seconds, but right here, name, user, and password. This is the new or existing database name. And so we already have a new database. So let's go get it. Okay. Right here, the database name is this. So I'm going to copy that again, copy and paste is your friend. Make sure that you get that exactly right. Make sure you don't accidentally add an extra space or anything back there. Uh, username right here, the valid database username. Let's go get the username. Okay, you can see how nice it was that we copied all this stuff. We're going to paste that right inside here. And then finally, the password. Okay, we're going to go ahead and copy that. And we're going to paste that right in here. Now, host. Okay, what do we write in here? Well, this is going to depend on your web server's configuration. Most shared web hosting providers, okay, uh, localhost is what you write in here. So if you're not sure what to put in here, try localhost to begin with. You can test your connection and see if that works. Some shared web hosting providers, however, have a different, require you to write down a different host name. And if that's the case, you will have seen that when you were creating your MySQL database in the first place. Um, the biggest example I can think of is DreamHost does not use localhost. DreamHost actually, uh, they, they, they store their MySQL databases on a separate server. So you're going to need to um, get that information. But when you're creating your database uh, through through DreamHost, it's quite obvious where to, what the host name is. And, and that's something that I would have recommended that you actually write down right here. Um, under most circumstances, I'd say 99% of the time, it's just going to be local host. So that's why they pre-fill that with local host for you. In our case, I know with Bluehost, it's local host. So we don't have to change anything. We'll just leave that as is. Before we go ahead and run this deployment, we're going to test this connection. And what this is going to do is, is this is just going to test to make sure that we've put in the correct information here. So let's go ahead and click test connection. And this is great. We see server connected success, database found successful. So this is great. Yay. All right, so this means that this worked. Now, there's a few other options that we can do here. If we need some extra help, we can access these tutorials and guides. We don't need help. There's some advanced options here. We're going to ignore all of those for right now. There are some warnings here, the standard disclaimers. They're basically saying this plugin requires above average technical knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. Please use it at your own risk. We've talked about this already. Hopefully you feel comfortable at this point moving forward. I'm going to go ahead and click and say, I have read all warnings and notices and they really want you to be aware that the remove action will delete all tables and data from the database. This is the new database that you created. And this is why I created a brand new database because I don't want to take the chance of accidentally overwriting some existing database. I created a brand new database. This is a brand new empty database. So the fact that this is going to delete everything inside that brand new database is fine. That's the whole purpose. I created this new database specifically for that. So there we go. We are aware of what's going to happen here. Um, make sure that this is your new database. Make sure you're not accidentally putting in a current database uh, that's in use. Very unlikely for that to happen. But if you did, it would be bad. Um, 
So that's our new database. We're good. Everything seems to be fine. Let's go ahead and run deployments. I'll click the run deployment button. And of course, they really want you to know that to make sure that these database parameters are correct because entering the wrong information will overwrite an existing database. I'm 100% certain that this is the correct database. So we will go ahead and click OK. And so this is now processing the files and the database. This normally doesn't take very, very long. Say it says here, this may take several minutes for a very large installation. It might. Uh, in this case, I don't expect that it's going to take very, very long. If it does, ah, there we go. Okay, so we have a bit of a confirmation screen here where we see um, some, some information here. Uh, we see we're going to review the old and new path and URL settings, okay? Um, we see that this is the old URL, right? It recorded what the old URL was right here, oldlocation.confidentialrecords.ca. You shouldn't have to change any of this, so we're just going to leave this as is. And this is our new URL, okay? The new URL is newlocation.confidentialrecords.ca. Uh, robobunnyattack.com and there's a new path associated with that. Again, you should not have to change any of that. That should be automatically filled in for you. And if you wanted to change the title of your site, you could right here, although I just want a perfect copy. If you wanted to create a new administrative account for your WordPress site, you could do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep the old one, okay? And there's some advanced options here too. I'm going to ignore all of that. We're just going to go and run the update. And so we'll go ahead and run this this update. And what it's doing is it's replaced all of that data. And there are some important final steps here that we're going to do in the next video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. For ad-free versions of all my videos and other bonus content, check out my online courses at robobunnyattack.com. Thanks for watching.